Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm Rain Moon, and today I, we have with us Mern, one of the fastest rising producers in the EDM industry. Hey, what's up, guys? For those of us who don't know who Mern is, can you please give us a brief inter introduction? Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Mern, um, Singapore based DJ producer. A year ago, I released the EP on Mad Decent, and since then, I've played at Jakarta Warehouse Project, Ultra Singapore's. Just got back from It's the Ship, I think, a month ago. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think things are going okay. For as for your music, uh, you produce future-based music, right? Um, I try to try not to classify it, but it's, um, yeah, it's a mixture of trap, really high-energy kind of beats. Okay, cool. Do you uh, do you identify yourself as a solely a musician or? I think it, it's it's harder nowadays to just be uh, a DJ, just a DJ, or just a producer. It's it's always nice to dabble in all forms of you know art, like. Mm. But you know, I'm primarily a musician, but I enjoy other forms like visual art, etc. Okay, that's good to know. Um, mm. We've heard you have uh, classical experience, right? Experience in just a bit. <laughs> yeah, just it, a little. Jazz piano, is it? Is that mm. true? Uh, I I studied classical piano. And then in the final few years, uh, with a focus on ragtime and jazz, mm -hmm. so um, it wasn't really translatable to my music because that kind of um, theory is really good for just understanding workflow composition. But you know, electronic music was a uh, was really different to me, and that, that was why I liked it in the first place. But it really helps with the um, you know theory and progressions, etc. That's good to know. Okay, so in other words, you're saying like. And nowadays, it's not really required for electronic music. Like, it doesn't really help like, much. You don't really need to know. Uh, yeah. I guess so. You know, like, uh, Hans Zimmer can't even read um, sheet music, mm. right? But he's a really talented instrumentalist, really good with his uh, DAW. So, it's a lot of things. Um, if you're really good, if, if you treat your DAW like an instrument, it's, it's almost the same thing. Okay, that's cool. And um, we also know that you used to have um, several different other aliases before, right? Like you used to produce the, uh, other genres before, like Future House. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, um, yeah. when I started out, um, I wasn't just focusing on one kind of genre, which was really, I think, really good for everybody to, uh, to just dabble in different forms of expression because, you know, you learn so much. Mm. So would you say uh, you're happiest in the studio or in front of the crowd DJing? It's a, it's a different kind of happiness, but definitely mostly in the studio, That's because um, yeah. you know it, it's just it's a it's a very lonesome kind of thing. So it, it's only you in the studio. Mm. I mean, independent, right? It's only you in the studio listening to your songs, uh, just imagining how it sound a big system. And uh, in the club, it, it's totally different. Like DJing is more of a cardio workout for me. Yeah, <laughs> it's good to know. Yeah. So, um, my next question is. What what is your what is the current projects that you are working on? Do you mind sharing some of them? Those are not too, <laughs> are not too classified. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely working a lot of uh, larger bodies of work like mm -hmm. EPs. I have a lot of album demos, but um, I think the focus for 2017 will be a lot of um, vocal centric stuff. Lots of stuff with uh, vocals. vocals? Yeah. Um, what do you think about the current state of Singapore's music? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, you know, growing up here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've always looked towards like a, try to find a community or like a group of like-minded people, and I think in Singapore it's just hard because um, you know a lot of factors. Um, whereas you, if you compare it to you know some countries that are a bit more liberal, like maybe the UK or Los Angeles, if where, where there's not so much an emphasis on education mm -hmm. or um, you know supporting yourself with a, with a real job. Um, in, in Singapore, it's um, it's this huge. It's, it's very structured, like from primary school to secondary. Um, it's always a form of education. It's it's very hard to find an outlet in in the middle mm -hmm. to you know pursue wholeheartedly. It's always something you do on the side, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah, I find it true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sure we all know. Like the the only time you get to try to do all these hobbies on your own, it's it's when you have maybe like a stable job and you're able to find some time off. Mm. So in terms of community, it's still quite small, but there are a lot of people doing really interesting stuff like, you know, Syndicate, SG, Are yeah. uh, you guys rocking good, uh, Darker Than Wax, uh, Phyla. So all, all these people that are really hustling day to day, like that's what Singapore really needs. 
good. Okay, so I want to ask you a question about. Have you heard about uh, real DJing before? Um, yeah, is it like the yeah, yeah, action? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, not just pressing play. Basically, that's what we mean. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. other than just um, doesn't necessarily mean turntablism, but mm-hmm. just like not playing mixtapes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you have like? Wow, what what does it like mean to you? Like you to, should be asking Leonard that for- question. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really admire the work of uh, turntablists, uh, t- right? It's a it's a different kind of uh, expression, really. It's like a whole different game from uh, like normal club DJing um, compared to you know when you book an artist like because he makes like good songs, he mm-hmm. comes here and he plays his own song, and that's it's pretty easy, right? Because you're just queuing two tracks and yeah, mixing. That's right. But then like real DJing is really just like. Hours of like digging for samples, like curating a performance, making mm-hmm. sure everything sounds on point. I think it's even like one step above DJing, and it's just really sad that a lot of people can't really appreciate that in the club. Like you know, if you, if you go to an A track set, if you are like a scratch head, you'd be like, oh, this is dope. But yeah. half the crowd will be like, oh, this is scratching my ears, right? They're not used to it. Like, yeah, they're, yeah, they're not used to it at all. And I think right now it doesn't mean that if you play you know, pre-recorded tapes. You're a sellout because right now people are doing stuff like they're composing like whole playlists before they get on stage, like in record box. So you just play one song after that. That's that's the same thing as yeah. a pre-recorded mixtape. So you're doing you're the same set, thing. Yeah, preparing a set and you're sticking to it like hundred percent. That's terrible, especially for the bigger acts because you can just play whatever you want, mm-hmm. and um, the crowd will still go crazy. Yeah, so yeah. like the the songs are all tailored to just like flow like hundred percent energy. All the yeah. way. Cool, cool. So speaking of our uh, international acts, uh, what's your next big international event? Um, it's a lot of uh, shows. I'm actually doing an Australian tour in January. Mm-hmm. So wow. five cities, <laughs> all the big cities. That's in January. That's cool. Okay. Any last things to tell the fans? Um, just keep listening to my music, even if it's <laughs> through Zippy Share, Pirate Bay. Uh, if there's someone out there listening to it, it's still cool. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Man for everybody, Azure TV, out.